Ladies and gentlemen, it's a big, weird, wild world out there, folks, and here we stand. Al Pied del Cañón, ready for anything. I'm Rob, and you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the one and only Provo Show, coming to you live at 8.30 a.m. Central European Time, 2.30 a.m., um, Eastern Standard Time, uh, and for Eric, our friend in the Philippines, it's 2.30 p.m. For our friend Eugene in the chat, it's 11.30 a.m. You are joining one of the most international shows on the radio right now. How are we doing out there, folks? A big good morning to Vero, Eugene, um, and Eric. If you want to join in the show, if you're a radio listener, you, you're actually hearing the show 24 hours late. So if you want to cho- join us live there are two ways to do that. You can either A, go to twitch.tv barra professional bohemian, or if you want to get the latest news, the latest gossip, the latest games, you find me or you find the Probo show on any good podcast directory. How are you doing out there, folks? My God, have the elves been busy creating a show for us today? Um, in 100 Humans, in the second half of the show, we ask them to name something a clown might carry. Name something a clown might carry or might be carrying. A clown. Un payaso. Right? I think he's saying Spanish. Do I get a nivelazo? Nombra algo que puede llevar un payaso. Thank you. Translation elf. <laughs> um, let's see. And then in Complete the News, we find out um, why the Pentagon AI might be more ethical than others. And um, we find out what sharks might be eating off the coast of Florida in Complete the News today. Oh my God, if we get to both items, let's see. Um, But all that fun, my friends, is coming in the second half of the show. In the first half, we've got a delicious, unpopular opinion. Designer babies. I'm talking about genetic editing. Edición de genes? I don't know how you'd say genetic editing. In, um, in Spanish, but designer babies, los bebés de diseño, what do you say, um, will be a net positive for society. Serán positivos para los, la sociedad. Have oh, I said that correctly with my weird, giri pronunciation? <laughs> um, but finally, guys, a big thank you for joining us. If you want to join in the fun outside of our recording times, you can do that on my Instagram, Instagram at Professional Bohemian. That's arroba bohemio profesional, pero tradúzalo en, en inglés. Tra- translate to English. Professional Bohemian. You find me there on Instagram. You find me there with that handle on Patreon. You'll find me with that handle on Instagram. Um, I think your elves slaves should receive a salary rise, Rob. Uh, I don't think so. No, 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 no. They'll get whipped and shamed until they do more work. The elves, come on, come on. (laughs) I get a surprising number of messages about the elves and how disgusted people are with my treatment of them. I don't care. I don't care. They're better than AI. (laughs) Um, So there you go. That's what's coming up in the show today. Um, Right now, I'm here. You're here. Let's see what's going on in the world. Um, Some interesting news. I do have a lot of news about the, um, the climate crisis that's happening, but... I'm going to put that on um, on the back burner for a little while. Why am I going to do that? Well, that's a great question. Well, because it's just very depressing, isn't it? Isn't it just the most depressing thing in the world? I have two pieces of news. One, the Arizona. In Arizona, in the States, doctors are seeing a spike. They're seeing a sudden rise in patients who have suffered burns. How, why have they suffered burns? Because they've fallen on the floor. The floor has reached such a temperature, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So when they fall on the floor, they're getting severe burns. That's crazy. And that the water temperatures off of the coast of Florida soar to over 100 degrees. I mean, geez, look, that's, that's the exact same temperature you would have a hot tub. <laughs> You know when you go to a spa and there's a nice big hot tub in there? Or if you're very lucky and you have one at home? That's the temperature you have a hot tub. That's the ocean, friends. <laughs> We're turning the ocean into fish soup. So yeah, I want to abandon a little bit the doom and gloom um, 
of um, of the climate crisis um, just for a second. Um, there is one piece of climate news I want to cover more than the other two because it's super important. Have you guys ever seen the documentary An Inconvenient Truth? It's the, um, I think, I believe he was former vice president or uh, presidential candidate Al Gore many years ago. Uh, produced a documentary film. It was more. It was more like um, una charla. It was more like a speech he was giving um, that was recorded, called "An Inconvenient Truth." When it came out, I remember. Um, I remember there was a lot of um, there was a lot of talk regarding this subject, climate change. I don't even believe it's real. That kind of thing, right? And he predicted that um, that meltwater, if it um, if it leaked, meltwater is fresh water melting from the ice caps or from from glaciers. If it were to leak um, to a dramatic event, uh, to a dramatic degree into the Atlantic Ocean, it would cause um, a break in what he described as the Atlantic conveyor, which is um, a, a conveyor system under the ocean that takes um, hot air and and um, circulates it through um, through the ocean. Well, look, bearing that in mind, this is a new story I found today from the Washington Post. Scientists detect signs that a crucial ocean current is near collapse. So the the ocean current that that um, Al Gore was talking about is actually called the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation (AMOC). A crucial ocean current system is showing signs of instability and could potentially collapse by mid-century due to climate change, according to a new study. Um, this this conveyor, this Atlantic meridional um, meridional meridional, my God, um, overturning circulation, the AMOC, which transports warm water from the tropics to the North Atlantic and sends colder water back south. Um, is being disrupted by the influx of cold, fresh water from melting Atlantic ice. Dude, Al Gore predicted this years ago. I can't remember when an inconvenient truth came out. Um, in fact, I'm going to find that information. Um, an inconvenient truth. Ah, dude, my keyboard has decided not to work. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but anyway, this was predicted years ago by in this speech by Al Gore, and he predicted... As um, as a consequence of the conveyor being broken, it would send Europe into an ice age. Oh my God, guys! I'm just starting to deal with the heat now. An ice age is on our doorstep. Come on, friends. Come on. Uh, let's see what people are saying. Where is everybody? Good morning, Rob. Sorry, I'm late. No one. No worries. Symbol. Nice to see you. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, everybody. We shall have to forgive Rob his sleeveless state. I have no sleeves. It's too hot. Madrid's too hot right now. Um, always, as always, Rob is here at the foot of the wick. Al Pie del Canyon. How are you doing, friends? <laughs> okay, let's move on from there. Climate doom and gloom and take a look at the actor's strike. Have we mentioned this on the show before, the actor's strike? That there is a writer's, a writer's strike first and now an actor's strike. Um, and a big part of this is due to um, actors and writers wanting protection from developments in artificial intelligence. Well, I found a great article today from theintercept.com. As actors strike for AI protections, Netflix <laughs> has listed a job paying $900,000 a year um, for, um, for an AI job. I think it's an artificial intelligence boss or something. Here we go. Let's read the article. Hollywood actors and writers are striking for the first time since 1960, demanding better wages and regulations on studios' use of artificial intelligence. This comes amidst revelations that companies like Netflix are investing heavily in AI, with job postings offering up to $900,000 a year for an AI product manager. Oh, <laughs> Oh my gods, friends. Oh my gods. Um, so yeah, interesting. AI products manager could mean anything. Let's be honest. This is this article is a little sensationalist for my liking. An AI product manager perhaps 
Netflix is um, looking to enhance their um, recommendation algorithm using AI. It could be a little bit of anything, but it is very interesting that AI, that um, Netflix, amidst a writer's and actor's strike, is posting jobs for an AI product manager. What do you think? Would you would you care if you were consuming media that was created by an AI? I've got to be honest, I would. I would. I wouldn't feel as happy reading a book written by AI, or I wouldn't feel as happy or as content um, watching a film that was written entirely by, by AI, or if there was an AI performer. There's something about watching um, uh, watching or consuming media produced by a human that I think is irreplaceable, right? If anything, as an upshot of this increase in volume of AI-produced content, we're going to value more what, what humans produce. I mean, that's my prediction anyway. What do I know? I'm an idiot, friends. I'm an idiot, but that's what I think. Um, let's see. And finally, <laughs> finally in the news today, the EU passes a law to blanket highways with fast electric vehicle chargers by the end of 2025. We're talking about two years away, friends. Um, el UE aprueba una ley que dotara a los autopistas. They're blanketing the highways with electric vehicle chargers by the end of 2025. The count, this news coming from TheVerge.com. The Council of the EU has passed a new regulation to facilitate electric vehicle travel across Europe and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Wow. The law, effective from 2025, mandates the installation of fast charging stations offering at least 150 kilowatts of power every 60 kilometers. There you go. Maybe it'll soon... Soon, maybe we'll be able to travel across Europe in um, in an electric vehicle. That would be a big deal because I think, other than the price, the price is a big turnoff for a lot of people. I couldn't afford an electric vehicle right now. I mean, to be fair, I couldn't afford anything more expensive than a skateboard right now <laughs> or a patinette electrico. But we all know what happened when I had one of those. Um, but it's interesting that the the Europe are, um, are really doubling down on this. I think this is a really great development, man. Really great development. Does anyone out there in the chat own an electric vehicle? Interested in owning an electric vehicle? What would be your biggest kind of turnoffs from having an electric vehicle? The price, perhaps the the insecurity in finding um, an electric vehicle charging station, I think would be a big turnoff for me. I mean, imagine your electric vehicle gets stranded in the middle of nowhere. It's not like you can go to a gas station and come back with a bucket of electricity. Do you know what I mean? Interesting stuff, guys. Uh, Friday Cons here, joining us all the way from South Africa. How are you doing, friend? Never watched a horror movie before and started with Scream. What's your favorite horror movie? Oh, Con, great question. Hmm, difficult question because I love horror movies. One of the most scary horror movies I've seen is Hereditary. Wow, that's terrifying. <laughs> It's really, really good. Um, but best horror movie is difficult. It's a difficult question because there are so many and so many good ones. I'll tell you what, I'll make a note and I'll answer this tomorrow if you come in tomorrow, Con. And how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Um, so there you go. Those are the three pieces of news for today. Um, the the a AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation is um, nearing collapse. The actors strike and the EU law, passing a law um, to have f fast electric vehicle chargers within 50, 60 kilometers of one another by the end of 2025. That's a really short deadline, man. Okay, on that note, friends, let's go to an unpopular opinion. Unpopular opinion. Okay, guys, what even is an unpopular opinion? It's a brain fat, un pedo mental, un pedo cerebral, una rayada. I share it with you right here on my social media, uh, namely my Instagram, arroba professional bohemian you guys vote there and uh, and then we bring it to the discussion we table the discussion right here in the um, in the chat for all the people that are watching live and we make a final decision okay just so you know it was an unpopular opinion today a, re a genuine unpopular opinion the unpopular opinion was designer babies will be a net positive for society Designer babies will be a net positive for
for society. Los bebés de diseño, I think you call them. Designer babies. Los bebés de diseño serán positivos para la sociedad. Okay. There you go. Um, uh, Rob, give me a nivel for for this unpopular opinion because I voted true in the Instagram poll, but the majority voted false. I don't know why. I don't know if that earns you a nivel Eric. I don't know. It'll come. It'll come. Oh, getting lots of suggestions for horror movies. Uh, symbol, The Others. The Others is a great... That's a Spanish-produced horror film as well. You know Spain produces some great horror movies? I would recommend that the original Rec, R-E-C as well, Con. Um, it's in Spanish, but the subtitles are perfect. Check it out. It's a great movie. Um, what's a designer baby? Well, we're talking about genetic manipulation, Con. So the idea is you can choose attributes. This is already at our doorstep. We're very close to be able, being able to achieve this right now. Um, being able to choose attributes of a baby we're about to have. So I want my baby to have blue eyes. I want it to be... Um, I want to be sure that it's not going to develop multiple sclerosis or other genetic illnesses. Okay? So we can design a baby. And I said, in my unpopular opinion, that this is a positive for society. In Instagram... 68% of the people who voted said false. So let's discover why and let's see if you guys agree. Okay, the pro, poor Probosho elves, the slaves, have been slaving away and they've given us eight or four pros and four cons, pros and contras, for this argument. In the pro column, um, the ability to modify a baby's genetic makeup could lead to the elimination of of hereditary diseases. A hereditary disease is a disease you inherit um, from your parents and your parents' parents, a genetic disease. Um, significantly reducing human suffering and healthcare costs. Hmm. Um, next, genetic modification could potentially enhance a child's physical and cognitive abilities, leading to a more capable and productive society. Hard to argue against that one, right? <laughs> All you have to do is read the news today and think, oh my God, we're going to go extinct. Guys, on yesterday's show, <laughs> there are people behaving like non-playable characters in video games and people are paying them 7,000 euros a day. We're going to go extinct, guys. We're going to go extinct. <laughs> Let's make a, a society of Einsteins, please. Okay, fi um, next. By altering genes associated with aging and diseases, um, we might significantly increase human lifespan and improve the quality of life next um, designer babies could level the genetic playing field giving every child a fair shot at life regardless of genetic lottery of the genetic lottery of birth saying there the elves are saying there that you know it's a lottery you have a child and you know depending on your genetics depending on the um, way you live even um, it could be susceptible to certain genetic um, abnormalities. Let's just put it like that. And genetic editing with the ability to create your baby or, or design a baby. You, um, you could potentially level the playing field for everyone. Okay, and next, in the con column, designer babies um, will not be a benefit for society. Um, the idea of genetically modifying humans raises profound ethical questions such as playing God and could lead to a slippery slope of non-medical enhancements. Mm. Um, here we go. Next one. If only the wealthy can afford genetic modifications, it could exacerbate social inequality, creating a genetically enhanced elite and further widening, it, widening the gap between rich and poor. Next, a loss of diversity. Genetic modification could lead to a loss of human diversity in certain trait if certain traits are deemed undesirable, potentially resulting in a homogenized society. Guys, if you've ever been to Los Angeles, it's a little creepy when you're walking around and everyone's tall and beautiful with perfect bodies. <laughs> are we going to turn the rest of the world like that with genetic, um, with designer babies? Maybe. And finally, in the con column, our understanding of genetics is still incomplete. Alterations could have unforeseen consequences, potentially introducing new diseases or destabilizing the human gene pool. Some interesting um, arguments there. So that's today's unpopular opinion. Designer babies will be a net positive 
for society, true or false. We'll get to the vote in a little while. Let's see. Um, Eugene, I like parodies on scary movies. We're still talking. Con's opened up a can of worms here. <laughs> like pod people, asks Con. I guess. I don't know what pod people are, Con. I don't know. Maybe that's a South African thing. <laughs> um, 99% agree, says Symbol. What's wrong with wiping out diseases? People are just ridiculous. No offense. No offense taken. And you know what? I kind of, um, regardless of how people vote, I kind of agree. Robo approved. But they do, the elves have made a good point there. You know, how how do we distribute the ability to design one's child? Is it um, based on um, uh, based on wealth? Or is this open to the public? You know, because if it's if you have to pay for these things, if you have to pay to the, to eradicate certain diseases in your child, then yeah, what what we're doing is creating even more of a disparity between the rich and the poor. Hmm. But as a concept, right? We're not talking about um, how it's implemented. We're not talking about the idea as a concept. I find it hard to think eradicating certain diseases, certain genetic diseases, is a bad thing. You know. I mean, already, if you have IVF treatment, you can um, choose certain traits in th- in the partner that you want to um, uh, that you want to be partnered with. Look, I want I don't want to partner with genetic disp- disposition for Alzheimer's or certain cancers. You know, you can request that. Is that so different? Is that so different? I mean, yes and no, right? Yes and no. Okay, I did get some. Um, I did get some messages regarding this. Leo said, um, "From a purely scientific perspective, the ability to eradicate genetic diseases is exciting, but it's crucial we tread carefully. There's a fine line between enhancing health and stepping into eugenics." Yeah, and I also understand that argument. Um, Ava says, "As a mom, I the idea of giving my child the best start possible is appealing, but..." Isn't there beauty in life's unpredictability? Plus, not everyone can afford it, creating a wider gap between rich and poor. Yeah. Well, we're saying not everyone can afford it. We don't even know yet, Eva. We don't even know yet, but still, great point. And Isabel says, on the surface, it seems promising, doesn't it? Healthier, smarter babies, but at the cost of um, homogeneity. Uh, homogeneity. Oof. Homogeneity? I don't even know you. You have um, out outsmarted me there let's give you a robo approved <laughs> good for you guys write like a five-year-old otherwise i'm not gonna be able to read it <laughs> and potential social strife we must weigh the long-term implications on our society okay isabel thank you for that uh let's go back to the the chat and see what they're saying um Genes are what links you to what came before. Changing that damages history. Also, changing genes ruins my idea of Assassin's Creed, <laughs> which is a video game. Cotton people aren't going to understand that on the radio. But I, um, I take your point here about changing history or damaging history. History stays the same, man. Why can't genetic m- manipulation just be the next stepping stone of um, of history, right? Why can't that just be in the name? And th- at this point, we created gene manipulation and, de- and designer babies. And from then on, history is something different, including the idea of genetic modification. Do you know what I mean? Um, Eric, for me, this un- um, this unpopular opinion for me is now becoming confusing. No idea. Yeah. This is what's great about the unpopular opinions. We delve into these, um, these shades of gray that are almost impossible. Almost impossible. To, um, to figure out where we want to go. Um, finally, Symbol says, Ridiculous. Diseases are just so awful. People who don't have family who suffer diseases should not have the right to fight against the idea. Wow. MJ Symbol has some strong feelings about this. And me too, you know? And me too. Imagine the ability to be able to eradicate certain illnesses. I know we kind of think... We think about genetic manipulation, our brains go to the idea of eugenics. But should we be so extreme with our ideas? Is it so black and white, or are there many shades of grey in the nuance, Matith, in the nuance regarding this um, subject? I mean, I think we talk about designer babies, and people immediately go with their minds to, oh, wow, people just want um, blonde, blue-eyed babies? Screw that. No, but they, they... The idea of um, designer babies is so much more advanced or so much more complicated than that. 
when we're talking about Alzheimer's, when we're talking about things that we inherit from our parents and have no control over. It's an interesting and a fascinating topic to discuss, and that's why we table it here today for you guys, my friends. But we are heading um, headlong into a <laughs> into a commercial break, guys. So I'm going to have to go, but I will leave you a, a poll in the chat while we go to this commercial break. And you guys will tell me, designer babies will be a net positive for society. True or false. Um, here we go, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today and joining me live. And all those of you guys that are downloading the podcast over the summer, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, you angelic beings out there. Friends, I have to go to a quick commercial break. Um, do vote in the chat. And we'll, um, we'll come to a consensus on this. Friends, so many things you could have been doing today. But instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with me. And it means the world. See you in a few minutes. Hey guys, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind the scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. And you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P-R-O-B-O-H. Okay, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Probo Show. Currently 9 a.m. Central European Time, 3 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. for my friend um, <laughs> Eric in the chat. And I believe 12 in the afternoon for our friend in Russia, Eugene. Um, how are you doing out there, guys? Welcome, welcome. We have a full chat today. Um, uh, nice to see you all here on this beautiful summer morning. We have um, we have reached a conclusion with the vote, my friends, um, for today's unpopular opinion, which is designer babies will be a net positive for society. Instagram said 68% false. But what did the guys joining us live in the chat say? We'll get to that in a second. If you've just tuned in, if you've just tuned in, um, what did we speak about in the first part? Well, we briefly covered that the ground in Arizona is so hot People are suffering from severe burns by falling on the floor. Crazy. And um, and that there are hot tub temperatures in the ocean in Florida. My God. It's the end of the world. But we didn't focus too much on that. We did also talk about the, um, the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, um, a current that transports warm and cold water throughout the ocean, how that is starting to break down. Scary stuff. Um, we spoke about um, the actor's strike and how AI <laughs> um, is a big cause of that. Not the only cause of the strikes, but a big cause of that. And how Netflix just posted a job <laughs> for an AI product manager paying almost a million dollars a year. Oh, my God. I need to get into AI, guys. I'm in the wrong job here. And then finally, a the EU passing a law to... Um, do, um, hang on, wait. Let's see if I can get this in Spanish. El UE aprueba una ley que dotará a las autopistas de cargadores rápidos para los vehículos electrónicos a finales de 2025. Did I say that right? Do I get a nivelazo from the chat? The EU passes a law to blanket highways with fast EV chargers by the end of 2025. Interesting stuff. And then we moved into today's unpopular opinion, which was designer babies are a net positive for society. Um, let's uh, let's see. Let's see what people were saying in the chat. We've got some, um, we've got some amazing opinions here. Um, as Symbol said... Um, this is from Eric. Everything for this unpopular opinion. I think um, I'll go with my instinct um, what, with what he said in the chat. He said, and MJ, MJ Symbol is, seems to be very pro the idea of designer babies, as I think am I, with certain caveats, but we'll get to those later. Um, Eugene says, we definitely need it in my country. We have so many mentally unstable people. My God. <laughs> I think mental instability comes from society. I mean, I'm sure there are certain mental illnesses or, yeah, mental conditions that are inherited within our genes, you know? But I think society plays a big role in our mental health. 
I mean, there is a mental health crisis going on right now. I think I read that something like um, a majority of Americans are suffering from depression. And I think it's happening here in Europe, too. By the way, if you're an international listener, we produce this show from Madrid, Spain. Um, and yeah, and you notice a tension in the air that didn't exist 10 years ago. Hmm. But I don't think that's a ma- question of genetics. I think that's a question of um, of society. Uh, let's see. Um, Rob, just look at TikTok to decide what would happen if humans were left to their own desi- devices. <laughs> <laughs> Approved. Yeah, man. Yeah, we sh- we shouldn't rely on humans to make rational decisions, man. <laughs> Have you seen TikTok, dude? There was a social media challenge convincing people to eat um, laundry detergent, and people did it. You know that says everything you need to know about humans. All right. <laughs> oh, dude. Someone protect us from ourselves. Come on, AI overlords, <laughs> take over. Um, uh, let's see. We de- um, uh, MJ Symbol, the problem is the term designer babies. We should address it as eradication of diseases. What do I care if there are loads of blondes or brunettes? Um, as if it really matters. Does one go around the city being upset that there are so many races and people with different color hair? That's a great point. He's a, you know what? Robo approved. Recently, Symbol has been on fire and it's a great point. So what? If people are choosing eye color, hair color, um, so what if they're choosing babies with um, uh, physical or mental prowess? So what if the upshot of this is the eradication of disease, of genetic diseases? Isn't it worth doing? Interesting question. But now you're saying, Rob, you're, you're, um, you're advocating for eugenics. I would not say it's eugenics when the power of the decision-making is in the people's hands. They're deciding on their own offspring. There's not one person deciding on the offspring of everybody. I'm thinking here about options. Interesting. It's a fascinating subject with um, with lots of moral gray areas. That's why I love to talk about this. Uh, let's continue. Um... All right. So, yeah, he's saying here that the problem is with the term designer babies. Yeah, exactly. Like nuclear power has become a bit of, uh, it's got tan. The idea of, or the the phrase nuclear, nuclear, or the word nuclear, has has developed um, a stigma. And nuclear power could could literally save um, our dependency on natural resources, but, oh, a lot of natural resources. Because obviously nuclear power doesn't come for free. But anyway, that's a, that's a whole other topic to address in a future show. Um, I agree with you, Symbol. Don't be like those weirdos who don't know about this unpopular opinion, says Eric. Woo! Poor Friday Con. I think he's the only person, our friend from South Africa, who voted false. Con, don't feel bad. I, <laughs> I get made to look like an idiot in the show 98% of the time, so don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry rob um uh, i did a u-turn and voted yes but only if the controls are put in place interesting i'd give anything to eradicate alzheimer's diabetes i've suffered diabetes for 30 years and it's ridiculous if i were rich most of my money would go to gene investigation that's from symbol interesting interesting um 30 30 years wow uno dos tres nivel says eric <laughs> Eric is, is like demanding Nivelathos. Not just for him, for other people. Eric, this time it works. Será posible vaya <laughs> Nivelathos. There you go. Um, so what do people say? Let's um, let's get into this. Okay, so I made the unpopular opinion that designer babies would be a net positive for society. You guys said... 83% true. We flipped the script on our friends in Instagram. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the idea of genetic editing. Yeah, I think I'm 100% for this, with one caveat. Like, in, in for example, most of us, here, well, a lot of the people who are listening to the show, not all of the people listening to the show, are in Europe, where we have, um, where have social healthcare, okay? If you're an American listening to this, don't get scared. <laughs> I know you're you're trained to be to to be fearful of the word socialism, 
but we have social healthcare. So I imagine some kind of um, if if genetic editing were possible for your, your offspring, it would be sub, it would be in some way um, paid for or at least contributed by the government. So I don't foresee there being a, a rich poor divide so much here in Europe. But imagine if you were living in the states, where where health co- healthcare costs are astronomical. What if you and your family have a history of heart conditions, but you can't afford to get that gene edited? Then it does become a question of the rich having an unfair advantage over the poor. And that's where I want to pull on the bricks. That's where I want to pull on the bricks. Because I feel like there's already enough of a rich-poor divide. So, yeah... It depends whether the controls are put in place. I don't care if people want to edit their children to be more beautiful, to have more of a symmetrical face, to have brown hair, blue hair, pink hair. I don't care. But can we eradicate these diseases? Can we make it... Can we eradicate these diseases, give everyone a fair shot at um, at making a more equal, more balanced, more healthy world? Then why wouldn't we take that shot? Why wouldn't we? But again, we're not kind of we're not here to debate rich and poor. We're not here to debate the one percent. We're here to debate whether designer babies would be a net positive for society, and I and I honestly believe it would. Got flying in the face of what it says, um, what our Instagram friends say. But look, guys, that's just my opinion, and I'm the chief idiot here. And as Grandpa Bo always said, opinions are like buttholes, friends. Everyone has one, and they all stink. There you go. <laughs> All right, friends, let's get into today's 100 Humans. Oh, my God, friends. Um, It was a long walk to work today across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys. And on that walk, I encountered 100 humans. And I asked them a question. Today's question was to name something a clown, un payaso, a clown, might be carrying. Name something a clown might be carrying. Nombra algo que puede llevar un payaso. Name something a clown might be carrying. I asked them that question. They gave me their answers. I have the top seven answers right here. Your job in the chat is to identify those top seven answers. All right, my friends. All right. Name something a clown, un payaso, might be carrying. Que puede llevar un payaso? What would a, a clown be carrying? I'm just going to drop into the chat and see what people were saying. Um, let's see. Um, um, if you, Rob, could have hair and be fit just like that, wouldn't you? Mic drop. Yeah, of course. Well, not the hair. I like being bald. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Today's unpopular opinion was nearly being bald is a superpower. <laughs> In fact, that might be tomorrow's. Because I honestly believe... Being bald is the future. <laughs> I think I, we should all be shaving our heads. It's, it saves so much time and it's so convenient. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see, let's continue. Golden rule, don't be judgmental person, especially Ken's and Karen's out there who thought, I have the right, who cares, says Eric. Be proud of who you are, simple as that, says Eric. Agreed. Um, PM me if you want to grab a beer. This I would love to, but I am so busy with work right now, Symbol. Right after the show, I have to go back to the office. I'll be there until God knows what time. Okay, so name something um, a clown might carry. Eric says, for me, in my experience, clowns carry balloons. Balloons. Globos. Is balloons there? Well done, Eric. He's gotten us off the mark, Eric, with 25 of 100 humans. That is the number one answer. Dude, Eric is on fire. Is this like five of these you've gotten right now, Eric? The number one answer? Okay, well done, well done, well done. So there you go. Balloons. Okay, Rafelka says, big shoes. Oh, dude, that's a great answer. Big shoes. Zapatos grandes, right? <laughs> big shoes. But is big shoes there? Did the um, uh, did the uh, 100 humans say big shoes? Oh, I suppose because clowns wear big shoes, they might not carry them. But great answer, Rafelka. Thank you, thank you. Um, 
Negative experience was people know this kind of prank. A pie in the face. A pie. Una tarta. Pie in the face. So a pie, says Eric. A pie. Hmm. Is a pie there? A pie. Well done, Eric. Eric's on fire. That's the number two answer, Eric, with 21 of 100 humans. Yeah, because you know they carry a pie and then they... They squash it in the face of the other um, of the other clowns. So yeah, try not to think of things that clowns wear. More things that clowns carry. Okay, que llevan. No llevan puesto, pero llevan. Oh my god, am I teaching English right now? Nivelazo. <laughs> okay, my bad. All right, here we go. <laughs> Um, all right, let's go, let's go. Um, a red nose, says Rafelka, and Vero says, a wig and a false nose. Mm, they're not there. Because those are things that clowns wear. But Vero also says, a horn. A horn. But I don't know how you'd say horn in Spanish. Oh, a horn. Would they carry a horn? Bocina? Cuerno? Claxon? Trompa? How would you say horn that a clown carries? Okay, a horn. Is a horn there? Well done, Vero. Horn is there. It is the number four answer with 12 of 100 humans saying horn. Well done, well done. Una bocina, says um, uh, says Vero. Thank you, thank you. We got there, we got there. Okay, okay. Confetti. Oh, great answer, says Rafelka. Can Confetti or candies confetti or candies is it there though oh Rafelka having some terrible luck today giving us some great answers but confetti was not there rosas flowers says Eric yeah they pull up flowers out of the inside of their jacket is flowers there my god Eric Eric, were you spying on me today when I was asking the 100 humans? Flowers is there. It's the third most popular answer with 14 of 100 humans. I'm going to give you some clues. I'm going to give you some clues, my friends. Okay, the seventh most popular answer is something even your average person would carry, especially if they have a cold. Ooh, Rafaelka, have a cold, un gripe. Rafelka has the answer. And I think he got the answer before he even heard me giving this explanation. He says, a handkerchief. Is a handkerchief there? Well done, Rafelka. <laughs> it's the seventh most popular answer with four of a hundred humans saying a handkerchief. Okay, the number six most popular answer is again something your average person would carry. But maybe not in the summer. Maybe not in the summer. They would carry this thing during the rainy seasons, spring, autumn, to help them stop getting wet when walking around. Oh my God, Eric, on fire. Eric and Rafelka both say an umbrella. Is it there? Oh. Well done, sixth most popular answer. You're only missing one. You're only missing one. Okay. Other than rackets... This is important when playing tennis. Other than other than boots and a pitch, it's important when playing football. <laughs> um, uh, this is a uh, this is something you'd use to play with your dog when you're teaching your dog to play fetch. <laughs> yeah, I promise this is there, just not just because I want to see everyone say balls in the chat. As Rafelka has written, ball. Is a ball there? Well done. <laughs> There's nothing that fills me with more joy than seeing a ton of people writing balls in the chat. <laughs> All right, so those were um, the seven most popular answers. Let's go through the list. So I asked 100 humans to, um, to name things that a clown might be carrying. In position number seven, we had a handkerchief. A handkerchief. I would love to know how to say handkerchief in Spanish. Let's see. Um, let's let's see if the translation elf can give us that. A handkerchief in Spanish is pañuelo. I knew that pañuelo. God damn it. 
All right, in position number seven, we had Panuelo. In position number six, we had an umbrella. An umbrella. Nine of a hundred humans said that. Guebos says, um, Guebos. Oh, you're saying balls. I get you. But you spell it bad, you made me say balls on the radio, Bridge. <laughs> okay, um, with 11, no, with nine of a hundred humans, we had Umbrella Paraguas. In position number five, we had balls, una bola, or una pelota. In position number four, we had, what did we have? In position number four, we had a horn. Not un cuerno, a horn. <laughs> una bocina. In position number three, we had flowers, flores. In position number two, we had balloons, go, oh no, we had pie, pastel, una tarta. I don't know how you'd say it. Usually it's just shaving cream and they just push it in someone's face. We had a pie. In position number one, we had balloons, globos. Well done, guys. Well done, Eric. And well done, Rafelka. He, he was slow off the mark, but towards the end of the game there, he owned it. So well done to you. Let's go straight into Complete the News. Complete the News. All right, guys, here we are in Complete the News. If you're one of the many people watching but not um, but not participating, this is your moment because all you have to write is A, B, or C. A, B, or C. So simple. All right, friends. So we're going to go to Florida for our first piece of, new of news. Blank is dumped in the sea off the coast of Florida. Blank dumped in the sea off of the coast of Florida could have crazy consequences if sharks, tiburones, sharks, eat it. So blank, dumped in the sea in Florida, could have crazy consequences if sharks eat it. But what is it? Is it A, marijuana? Is it B, cocaine? Or is it C, powdered sugar? <laughs> Blank, dumped in the sea, off of the coast of Florida, could have crazy consequences if sharks eat it. But is it A, marijuana, B, cocaine, or C, powdered sugar? Let me know in the chat what you think. Eric has an answer. He thinks cocaine, B. Okay, let's wait for more people to answer. What is it? Dumped in the sea, dejado en el mar or tirado en el mar? You know, dumped in the sea. Blank dumped in the sea in Florida could have crazy consequences if sharks eat it, scientists find. Okay, it's a tie between B and C in the chat. It's either cocaine or powdered sugar. Mm, what do you think at home? You should write to me on Twitter or wherever or on Instagram. Let me know your opinions and thoughts, friends. Okay, here we go. Blank dumped in the sea off of Florida could have crazy consequences if sharks eat it. Let's get into the answer. Here we go. Well done, Eric. It's B. This is true. This is a true story coming from, I believe it was The Guardian. No, Sky News. Um, scientists have raised concerns about the potential impact of cocaine dumped in the waters off of Florida on marine life, particularly sharks. The drugs often discarded by smugglers to avoid arrest or to be collected later could be causing sharks to have um, to behave unusually. Um, yeah, this is an interesting story. If you're a member of my Patreon, go there and read the whole thing because it outlines some weird behavior that sharks are partaking in. Oh, my God. Florida. Why is there cocaine in the ocean? Because Florida. There you go, friends, because Florida. All right, complete the news number two. <laughs> this is a good one. Um, uh, here we go. My hunch was correct. Yes, it was, Eric. You're going to get a... Nivelazo. Well done to you. Well done to you, sir. Okay, here we go. Um, Air Force, an Air Force general, an Air Force general says the Pentagon is more ethical. The, the Pentagon AI... The artificial intelligence of the Pentagon is more ethical because of blank. Um, un general de, del ejército del aire. An Air Force general says the Pentagon AI is more ethical because of blank. 
But why is it more ethical? Is it A, because of AI safeguards? AI safeguards. Like, what's an AI safeguard? These are things put in place to make sure AI is um, uh, is behaving rationally. Pre- um, protección de la AI, I think. Safeguards. To make sure it doesn't exceed its boundaries. So, A, AI safeguards. B, Judeo-Christian values. Or C, Hollywood movie training. Que han visto muchos pelis. <laughs> An Air Force general says Pentagon AI is more ethical because of blank. Is it A, AI safeguards, B, Judeo-Christian values, or C, Hollywood movie training? A, B, or C? Woo! What is it? Why would it be better, more rational, kinder, more ethical? A, B, or C. AI safeguards, Judeo-Christian values, or Hollywood movie training. Everyone in the chat is saying B. Let's go. All right. Air Force General says Pentagon AI more ethical because of... The answer is B. Well done, guys. (laughs) It is Judeo-Christian. God damn it. I wish people understood AI better. In a recent event, Lieutenant General Richard G. Moore Jr., a three-star Air Force general, stated that the U.S. military's approach to artificial intelligence is more ethical because of its than its adversaries due to Judeo-Christian roots. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I wish this wasn't true, but it is. This piece of news coming from uh, the Washington Post. I believe that um, is behind a paywall, but it doesn't matter to you guys because if you go to my Patreon and you're a member of the Patreon community and you support the work that I do, you get all these links with a little blurb so you can read the short piece of news every single day. So do join me there, patreon.com barra professional bohemian. Friends, we're coming up to the end of the show. Let me tell you something. I've had a blast. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you so much for participating. Um, if you're listening live on the radio, join us. Join us tomorrow. Um, guys, so many things you could have been doing today, but instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with me, and it means the world. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>